So you've seen some awesome display pieces on somebody's bookshelf or in the shops. Some of the models you can buy nowadays are amazing. Detail, the color, they just look fantastic. And if you happen to have followed my last video, you've now ended up with a nice, highly detailed model, but it still looks a bit bland and gray. Today we're going to address how to breathe some life into that model, get some prime on it, and then introduce it to the world of color and miniature painting. This is how we turn it from a solid gray, bland looking model to something you can display on your mantelpiece. So what do we do once we have this gray, bland, very intricate, nicely detailed statue that we want to paint, um, how do we get it from this to something that we can display on a shelf that we're happy with? Knowing that we can say, I did that. If you're not sure how to get this model to begin with, Check out my other video, which is the basics of 3D printing, how to get yourself a model like this and what you need to buy yourself and the gear involved in 3D printing. Where do I go from here? Miniature painting and painting in particular. We all know a lot of people that are big artists. First thing we have to do with our model, once it's been prepped, cleaned, sanded to a degree we're happy with, we're actually ready to put paint onto it priming. This is one of the first steps we need to do. Essentially taking plastic or resin, depending on what you're printed, we need to put a layer on it that's going to stick to that material, but leave us a coat on the outside that we can layer our paint onto. Sounds simple, and basically it is. So you can do a white prime, straight white. You can do a black prime, straight black prime. You can also do a xenothol prime. The xenothol is spraying it in completely black first, and then replicating how light would fall from the light source, usually above and from the front. So we use this using white. This gives us some really deep contrast now, before we even have color on the model. An example. This one here, the black of the prime stays in all the shadows and the recesses and the white light gives you an idea of where highlights and where that light is falling and where the shadows should be falling. Now, if you prime your model with a straight black first, it's going to give you very dark background to lay your color onto. Without getting too heavily into the color theory of why xenothol priming is good, believe me, give it a go. It will enhance your painting, especially at the start, giving you an idea of how to be painting this model. There are a couple of ways to prime as well. So the easiest, cheapest, well not necessarily cheap, the easiest way to prime is using the old rattle can, spray can. Very good if you've got 10, 10 models you want to prime all in one go, lay them out on a board, take it outside, grab your rattle can, give it a shake, lay that prime on there. Once that's dried, you're black, give it a highlight of white prime as well, give you a xenothol look, then you're ready to go. There is paint on primer as well. So if you don't have access to rattle cans, sometimes it's too cold in your area to use a rattle can, Canada, I'm looking at you, you can use paint on primer. Basic as it sounds, using a paintbrush, you paint this onto your model first, let it dry, and then you paint your color over the top. One of the third third ways, which is pretty popular and really good for using the xenothol. It just gives you some really good control for getting definition with the xenothol prime, is an airbrush. This is something I've purchased recently for my paintings. It really helped. It's really helped on some of the bigger pieces, obviously, for laying down some initial colour. Great for priming. I've, I've noticed I can get a very fine white with my xenothol coat. I've got a lot more direction using the airbrush of where I want to highlight and where I don't want to highlight. Whereas the old spray can, this is one of my earlier models, can be a bit heavy handed sometimes. You now find yourself with a primed model ready to paint. What are you going to need to start painting it? Obviously there's some essentials. Paintbrush, a cup of water to wash your paintbrush out with, a palette, something to put your paint onto, and a keen eye. 
essentially that's it but you know that's that's not where we're going to stop so in my basic kit for generally generally what i use for most of my painting a selection of paint brushes paper towel and cloth that's just for drying wiping dabbing extra paint off my brush bottle of water i have my wet palette that i use the wet palette is just a basic palette it has hydrofoam inside it that you soak with water and a hydrophobic sheet parchment paper that goes over the top uh, helps keep the acrylics moist and stops them from drying out rapidly you can cover it up and you can extend the life of your paints once it's been squirted out onto the palette from anywhere from a few hours to a day or two essential for saving that paint and just makes mixing and diluting a lot easier so essentially any acrylics will do a good basic selection of colors to start with cast your mind back to school and primary colors and what they all make um, essentially you can make any color you want to so long as you've got that red yellow blue some black and some white then you've got your primary colors and some shades essentially from there you can make any color you want to it may take you a little while of trial and error but you can do it what other accessories can make the hobby a lot more appealing easier and interesting painting handle this is great for holding models while i'm painting open it up once the model's on really good for getting into all those nooks and crannies without contorting your body around to get there definitely get yourself a painting handle or two this one i've printed myself um, there's a lot of designs out there to print your own painting handle using a couple of rubber bands to give it some tension and hold it all together have a paint shaker most of your paints will need an extremely good shake um, just to the nature of the paints to move all the pigment to get it to flow properly mixes all those little bits and pieces that scientists have spent ages formulating together to give you this 18 mils of paint you need to give it a really good shake magnifying helmet i find is a bit of a necessity i think as i'm getting older my eyes are definitely showing signs of wear for some of the very small intricate details this is a no-brainer for me Another accessory which comes in really handy for cleaning up the models. Basically a battery powered hand dremel. Any number of attachments. Really good for that final clean up before you get paint on. Modeling clay and a couple of modeling tools. One thing you might want to do is add some pieces to your models. You may want to do some repairs to your models. Handy to have some of this on hand. Even just for the base to help with some of the basing side of things. Paint brushes, yeah, as much as much as you want to spend on a paint paintbrush. I mean, start with some cheap ones while you're learning, and you learn while you're learning brush technique. And once you start getting some good brush handling technique, you can look after a brush, expand that collection. Uh, there is a number of brushes, all types of things you're wanting to accomplish: dry brushes, chisel tips, pinpoint, small size, large size. Some dry brushes handy for a certain type of technique which i'll cover in a separate painting video and then the range of paints you can buy is astounding i'm forever finding new methods of painting that i haven't haven't even explored yet so at the moment i've delved into acrylics army painter happens to be the paint that i'm using at the moment um, they have a really good selection which i have invested in number of colors they have metallics, a number of metallics, washes, effects, speed paints, which is a type of contrast paint. Um, I also own Duncan Rhodes Two Thin Coats, which is a range of paints released on Kickstarter with another wave of those due to arrive soon. And then, of course, I have a set range of airbrush paints that I use from my airbrush, but essentially any of my acrylics can be watered down diluted enough to go through the airbrush as well they don't have to be specific to an airbrush some of the parts i haven't delved into yet are a lot of the oil paints which can achieve some really amazing 
finishes on your models. So once once you have an assortment of gear, you're ready to paint. And painting is just the start of the journey. From there, there's heaps of opportunities for upskilling. I'll rattle off a couple of rabbit holes you can go down from here. If you want to look at upskilling your painting skills. Here's where you can branch into colour theory, contrast, shadows and highlights, and how they interplay with each other. One source lighting, painting your whole miniature as if it's coming from one source of light, like a candle or a lamp. Blending, wet blending, dry blending, different types of blending to get your transitions from one colour to another. Dry brushing, which is another way of getting really good highlights onto models, definitely something you want to look into. Airbrushing, the world's your oyster for the amount of skills you can look into from here. But the main thing is just get started, get some paint onto a model, and experiment from there. When you're starting out your journey into painting, each time you look at painting a new model, see if there's a particular skill you can practice on that one model. That might have a suit of armour and lend itself to non-metallic metal. Um, it might have a whole lot of texture to it, in which case you can look at the colour and maybe look at dry brushing. And if you haven't managed to get yourself a nice, crisp looking model to begin your painting journey, take a look at my other video where I go into what you need to begin 3D printing yourself, so you can make exceptional minis and figures and statues that you can then craft, paint and display proudly on your mantelpiece. Don't forget to subscribe and like if you like what I'm doing, and hopefully I can bring you more content like this. Thanks.